welcome to Revive Mission Podcast. This month we're addressing our community, um, building a safer community, what it means today. When we think of communities, we can think of the macro scale of maybe our the city we live in, the country we live in, or we can think about more personally about our homes, well, who's around us, who's closest to us. Today we have a returning guest. I always love having returning guests. It's Veronica, thank you so much for coming and sharing your insight as we start this month off in April. Think, uh, just thinking, being mindful about our communities. Thank you for coming on. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Robert, for having me. When I saw your email, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> but in a positive way. <laughs> uh, I love the space that you created where we can talk about something really important, and I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you and all those who come on because I, I don't I don't assume it's easy to kind of share or even have time. We always seem to be more busier as we get going. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate all the way come from Poland, right? Is that correct? You're still in Poland? Is that correct? Yes, in Poland. Okay. Well, I just wanted to share it with those. Oh, I, um, I usually have a disclaimer didn't put it in here, but if you are in crisis if you are struggling i in the united states it's 988 there's a crisis uh hotline and lifeline for you to find help but wherever community you're in i do encourage you to find what resources is helpful for you um we're gonna just go straight into it i always say they say better than me <laughs> i love using quotes because um you could uh, at least for me, I find that um, it definitely starts the thought at the very least. David Spangler says it this way. I'm going to ask your thoughts on this, Veronica. Some people think they are in a community, but they're only in proximity. True community requires commitment and openness. It is a willingness to extend yourself to encounter and know the other what comes to mind and i'm gonna keep this up here so it kind of takes your time to kind of process it it's a lot to unpack so go ahead when you're ready yeah. uh i mean this community is is something bigger just being uh than just being around people being in a group mm -hmm. like this quote said true community requires commitment and openness so you should like give a part of yourself to to other person give them opportunity to get to know you uh maybe take this risk to show who you really are mm -hmm. uh, and i think sometimes we are just just scared of being judged i think that's mm -hmm. that's why we just stay in our comfort zone mm -hmm. in our safe space um here i i don't i don't mean that safe spaces are something bad no not at all mm -hmm. it's just uh about extending your safe space for different aspects like new people new experiences mm -hmm. uh just to still feel safe around more and more things in your life and i think that community may be that thing where you feel like this is my place uh to do something with other people uh come up with some new ideas extend like my circle of friends find something what's mine there, uh, what I am good at, but also observe and uh, appreciate uh, what I can learn from the others. I, you know, I totally agree. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a trial and error. You know, we sometimes are maybe way too concerned of it working out the first time, but even if you don't try it, you'll never really know where you're where you are comfortable what may be how you say a uh, safe place and i do like how you mentioned it doesn't mean it's bad to have safe place or to have that safe community mm -hmm. but um like we saw in covid uh, it's when we didn't have something that we noticed we missed it <laughs> you know when we didn't have the ability to connect as we used to that we missed it. and I, I would i would encourage us not to get there <laughs> To miss things or to feel like we're missing out on our community or connections. Uh, I do feel as human beings, we do have a tendency to forget fairly quickly. You know, we're starting to get out of some of this, what we had with the pandemic. But 
I still see, um, you know, we are, unfortunately, from my experience, we forget quickly. So I, um, people, you know, people, we kind of go back to our usual tendencies of, you know. Uh, our routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I do appreciate what you mentioned there. Um, but I think it's an important point, like you mentioned. Um, if we're, you know, really having that self-talk of um and i i encourage it will be uncomfortable to kind of put yourself out there but at the same time it also will help mm-hmm. you kind of measure what's appropriate jackson brown Ju- um h jackson brown jr says remember the happiest people are not those getting more but those giving more i know on the flat surface it sounds very many people say this but i think giving is not just giving monetarily it's not just giving your time it's just giving your time you know a lot of times time is not really spent or even talked about it's usually just oh i gave you this to help you with this or tangible Mm -hmm. but giving our time is a big part what comes to mind when you hear this quote i think that we should say here that it's not like you must give something all the time like sacrifice everything your personal Mm -hmm. life and so on and so on it's not it's not about that. Uh, I think it's about healthy version of giving something for other people, which means also taking care of ourselves. Like be aware if you are able to give them what they need. Uh, it's important, uh, I guess, to to first think about ourselves. Uh, if I am ready to share with something, to give advices, to help. Uh, but actually all this giving thing can be amazing and uh, actually healing like you can show other people in a community be this example that we all have something to offer Uh, sometimes it's just our time or space to talk for a few minutes with someone Uh, but for this other person it can mean a lot Uh, and uh, it can make us happier actually uh the awareness that we have this this power actually to to help someone i do like what you mentioned you know our self-care on to to Mm -hmm. bottle it up but um i work now i've been working in the mental health field because i for almost two years and what i realized about that is people are people come to my office saving the world not saving themselves um Mm -hmm. what i'm trying to say is it's good to give so there's there's a there's a two sides of the coin of this quote that i look at what i'm also saying is i think the hardest thing and we're kind of saying it throughout this is having to look yourself in the mirror that's that's sometimes hard Mm -hmm. to kind of look at yourself and it's easier sometimes to help someone and avoid your own problems and i would encourage not to do that so um obviously you cannot give what you don't have so first look at yourself and see if you're if you're trying to negate what is going on with you i would encourage you to to address that try to find ways to address what you're going through on on the other side um if you're able to give your time it can be a blessing it can be something that you can actually heal and actually help so it's 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 a very uh, i really feel it's a double side of the coin because at the same time um we are happy when we are giving in the way that is not negating ourselves but also understand that helping people is work i'll just tell you this one right now so it's not it's an inconvenience so if you don't know how to put boundaries like i i need the car to help something else but you don't want to say no to your friend or your colleague or whatever that could be become a more problem this this doesn't become the happiest thing for a person and it's not because Mm -hmm. of giving it's about you not reflecting on what you actually can give so i think that's just a little side note on that but like i said service and community work hand in hand uh you know because they can't work without each other service and work. And I, I say this in kind of not a clunky or redundant way is it can 
actually sometimes to lament it can be the difference between someone feeling supported or not like you see this in churches you see this in groups there'll be a lot of people and it's just assumption that everyone feels connected but they don't <laughs> we know this we've been in those scenarios um i think the best scenario i don't know how it is in poland but middle school that age is probably the most awkward so like you have like a dance or you have a four like and the guys are on one side <laughs> girls are on one side they're all together but they mm -hmm. are painfully uncomfortable but um you know just because you're pro like the beginning quote just because you're close or around people you, it, it doesn't mean that you're really connecting and i think that's more apparent mm -hmm. today um uh, what comes in, when you think about along these thoughts, what have your experience been when you think about support and what does that mean um, to you and regarding um, the differences and anything that we've mentioned so far? Um, I think that, uh, as I said, community is a huge thing. And um, it's like we we should build them uh just to yeah feel feel supported feel uh comfortable around people and it can really helps us uh just to feel better in our own life feel connected with someone mm -hmm. uh, build a relation um yeah maybe deeper relation with with uh, a person yeah 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 and i feel the importance of it is what i'm trying to really get at because we could be really solid at, you know getting our self care doing our schooling getting our right job getting in our right place we could do all this but you know what happens those rainy days what happens when you're home and you're having a bad day at work or whatever and you're not connected and then it becomes harder and heavier you know this but i i do i do feel that that's part one part of the of the puzzle that sometimes gets ignored you know a lot of times you're like well i just need to get this and then i'll be okay i just need to get this degree i just need to get this job i just need to get this and it becomes a lot of tangible mm -hmm. things but we are not islands and i do encourage when we think about community if you're doing well right now it's it's also just um you know it's not just about work you know what i'm saying it's it, you know you have to have things to do you have to have things you're have fun about not not to 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 not to say um not to go to go on too much on this but one of the fascinating things i noticed is when i asked my clients what's your hobby you know what i find out veronica they don't really feel like they deserve a hobby because everything that they're going through they're like hobby what are you talking about why would i have a hobby i don't have time for that mm -hmm. but i would say I would always encourage that they make time because you know those rainy days those times so um wellness when we think about yeah, overall wellness um, it's, it's a lot of that so go ahead i actually i experienced that and myself when someone asked me if i have a hobby i was like what i don't have time for this <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and it, it's something that i also learned i remember when i was really struggling my friend he had he does fish tanks like uh salt water he was like you know you ever think about doing a hobby i'm like definitely not that that's a lot of work but for me it's like <laughs> he's like you know you should really do it i i do appreciate because you know for me i think being creative is a hobby like i, I do th this podcast i feel that's a calling that's mm -hmm. a service but I also like playing video games. I like playing games. I like doing things like that. So it's, I, I, I love music. I like singing. I'm not, I know I'm not saying I'm the best singer, but I just like being creative. So that's, I would say a hobby. Um, I think with music, I'm just segueing. Music is just like another form of communication. You know, it's just something expressive that you can do, whether you're, uh, and I feel that has been helpful for me to re revisit, but I think just like you, Veronica, I'm like, hobby? I got so many, 10 other things I have to do first before a hobby. I think yeah. it's just, it's not that you have to get that hobby right away. It's just to think about it. You know, it's not that you're going to have a bunch of friends that are going to be so there and you guys are going to high five yourself. It's just go out, mm -hmm. put yourself out there. You know, there's going to be a trial and error. 
it's just recognizing that it's important i think is what i'm trying to say when it comes to building a safer community it's not that oh you should get this because a lot of people will tell you what you should have but what works for you what works for you Mm -hmm. so and i want to as we into i'm gonna get a little bit i'm gonna ask you a little bit about what you've been up to veronica before we do i want to you know as we kind of segue out of the pandemic the idea the wording the verbiage of what safer community changes what's a safer community now just this week um mm-hmm. in nashville there was a shooting you know there was a shooting for, at a, a school and it was uh in the united states and you know we hear a lot about shootings and we're like it, it, it numbs us so a safer community means various different things not to get political and i'm not going to go there but safer community is different than when i was young or when our parents were young so <clears throat> what comes to mind now for you that sticks out when it comes to pandemic moving forward was safe for you uh i think that um changes are inevitable Mm -hmm. Uh, we also uh, must say that Uh, it's just uh, something that we cannot avoid Uh, and i would say it's uh sometimes it's just hard to to adjust because the change uh, maybe the change that happened is not uh comfortable for us sometimes uh, we think it's unnecessary but um I think the truth uh, is we cannot avoid changes. It's uh, like impossible, even mm-hmm. though some um, some of us think that they don't need it. Uh, in fact, they they really are. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, even like the teeny tiny situation affects us somehow. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important to have something what is constant. I think like something or someone we can rely on. Mm-hmm. And community can be that thing. Uh, community that we live in mm-hmm. uh, can be the significant element that uh, actually keeps us on track, helps us go through some tough time, mm-hmm. uh, and also experience some joy during this this maybe difficult period of our life. Um, and actually, I have a personal history here because uh, last week I was in Israel on a trip uh, mm-hmm. with. Uh, with people that I actually know just by sight, mm. uh, we live in the same area, but it's it's not like we we are connected somehow. Mm. Uh, but um, this trip was was uh, educational, inspiring, and it was really fun. But um, there, I realized how hardly I wanted to like share those moments with my people, with mm. with people <laughs> from my community. Mm. Uh, and this trip gave me like the the opportunity to see the importance of having your people by your side um and it's huge believe me i i was feeling so empowered after sharing that within my community because uh i discovered that uh those people in my group uh, also felt that someone was missing uh, and it's an amazing feeling just to know that you have people uh, who support you, who love you, mm-hmm. uh, and who miss you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's 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 amazing when you when you think about, like you said, you know, change is constant, but change is not always bad. You know, I, I yeah. use this funny funny illustration. Um, some people are very sports sports fans but if it's if things never change then that means argentina always won the world cup and always will (laughs) you know what i mean it's 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 like obviously some people wouldn't like that i would say some people in like let's say brazil wouldn't like that so i'm making that a funny illustration because change is not always bad you know sometimes it may feel bad and like you mentioned but um you know it's how we adjust to it and not only how we adjust to it how we respond to it you get what i'm saying um um i may not like where i'm at or a person may not like where they're at but you have to look at the whole constant the whole context i mean if Mm -hmm. if if it's been a five-year problem for you or something you've been trying to work through it's gonna take time to kind of 
unravel, unbox that to kind of make sense of what direction you want to go to. So give yourself time, give yourself time to get through that. And it's not a race, but at the same time, sometimes we forget about the context and we're like, well, you know, so and so got through it. Why well, you know you forget yourself, and then in yeah. itself, you don't really, you don't really respond appropriately because you're just like upset, which is understandable. You're upset, but with no direction because it's not really, it's a gen- you generalized your problem when really it's specific to you. What's important to you? What's a community? What kind of community you want to be in? What kind of people you want to be around with? Those things only could come from you. That's why I never really say, well, this is the type of... No, this is whatever works. I don't like reinventing the wheel. Find what works for you. And I know you mentioned Israel. That's wonderful. How long ago was that when you went there? Uh, I was there for two weeks. Okay. And this Um, this is pretty recent this year? uh, Yeah. Uh, I was uh, last week there, so I, last week I I returned. Okay. And, um, yeah. Well, that, that's all. That's awesome. I'm just you know, I you know I like to give a moment. So you know, I know you shared that, but um, what's been going on with you? Anything you want to? Uh, this gives you an opportunity to share besides um, how you're going to school still. Anything else? Those who watched you before, anything mm-hmm. you want to share at this moment? Give an opportunity. Uh, yeah, I still study, <laughs> actually. <laughs> uh, I study special education at university in Wrocław in Poland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have actually uh, three years more. So, mm-hmm. so like I'm in the middle of this process. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm really happy to to be there. Uh, I feel that I can like develop myself. Uh, I always find out something new. So... Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's really great. Yeah, um, a lot of times, you know, even where the field I work, it kind of overlaps because sometimes people have, you know, learning and learning disabilities that I work with mm-hmm. because, um, you know, fortunately, sometimes there is some overlap with some mental health concerns and stuff. They're not able to finish, you know, maybe even high school or you no. Know, you know, mm-hmm. I would say, and um, sometimes I try to assist them. You know, the kid. You know, when they think of mental health, sometimes you're just thinking about the illness. But there's also the you know the the population that you're talking about, the population that may find it hard to you know uh, connect. You know, when you talk about the spectrum, autis, autism, yeah. Aspergers, um, they may seem fine on the outside, but there it's crippling for them to socially connect so we're talking about communities uh, uh, for them sometimes it's terrifying to go in the community or to go mm-hmm. and get connected so I, I feel I do appreciate what you're doing it's good work you know uh, it's it's good to I would say um, uh, yeah so to reach yeah, the un- unheard go ahead sorry I like. I also think it's it's about just uh, building this awareness in other people, just mm-hmm. to show them mm-hmm. that uh, like we we are all different at mm-hmm. some points, mm-hmm. and we like should uh, like be aware on those differences because yeah, the person next to you can have a problem with adjusting to something, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe you will be the one who can help. Yeah. yeah, I would say you know, uh, restraint. You know, like if if some if you don't understand something or situation, I would say mm-hmm. side on the side of restraint. If you don't know what it is, I'm just saying this from experience. But at the same time, you know, one one of my um, bosses say it this way: um, someone uh, someone else's emergency doesn't always necessarily mine. So. What does that supposed to mean is um, be 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 aware of how you're feeling about a situation. If you're not really comfortable, the person is, um, you don't understand. The, the fact of the matter is you're not going to understand. And those who are struggling, and I'll just say this, um, they won't understand what you're trying to tell. But there's got to be some sort of middle ground of 
I don't understand, but I respect you. I don't mm -hmm. understand, but you're still a human being. I don't understand, but I could build towards that. Like you're saying, it's not just, uh, there's not going to be a complete understanding. I, I, I feel um, there's going to be a gap, but you know, just like Martin Luther King said, you don't need to see the whole staircase to go one step. And so when mm -hmm. you meet and you connect with people, I encourage to kind of reach out. You're not going to understand every aspect or like agree. You know, you learn more from people you don't agree with. <laughs> that much. Yeah. It's not a very fun experience at times, but um, you learn about human beings because you, you know, people are not, you know, ideas and thoughts and are not don't happen in the vacuum you know a lot of times the, the outliers when it comes to really combative individuals or people who are very very passive um happen because a lot of times there's a lot of hurt surrounding that you know they you know so i just encourage uh, those who are listening to recognize that and that's why when you're building a safer community it's not what does this person do what is that person is what you do and what you're able to do and moving forward and yeah. that um i mean there is always will be a gap right but there is. Um, yeah. between uh, some people but um we just need to accept that actually in my opinion yeah yeah i think we though if we're really being honest we're not going to understand everything you know and i feel like for me I, I have a little bit of grace for our parents, per se, especially when it comes mm -hmm. to these new, like, mental health or anything. They weren't brought up with it. It's it's kind of kind of harsh to kind of expect them to understand things like we mm -hmm. do today. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, full understanding, that's why there's professions, you know, there's, there's certain sectors. So it's yeah. unreasonable to think you're going to have a full understanding on everything mm -hmm. and at the same time it's not necessary you know at the same time we know that you know how it feels to struggle you know that you may not understand a person's situation but you can still be kind you can still be yeah. helpful so you know just like kelly uh gibran she says i've learned silence from the talkative toleration from the intolerant and kindness from the unkind <laughs> Yeah, it's strange. I'm great, uh, and I'm ungrateful to these teachers. <laughs> it's strange because you, you go through these this um, process. But when you hear this quote, what comes to mind? I think it's uh, it's strange. It's weird that most of things in our life we can <laughs> actually learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it's important to take these lessons for ourselves. Like we we all had this feeling when we don't uh, like someone's behavior we try to avoid it like do the opposite mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's it's uh, uh, so important to constantly constantly like interact with with many different people uh, mm -hmm. also be open for for those chances because uh, they teach us actually how to how to live how to behave we learn from their experience and ours at the same time and community is definitely like like a huge thing in our life we we have this this chance there to create a deep relation with someone find our people uh, but we shouldn't like be closed uh for just being around individuals that we know yeah. Uh, yeah, so so uh, my advice here uh, is to just discover the world, experience a lot of things in your life, but then come back to your community to share that with your people, mm. because like always remember about them because they shaped you somehow, they helped you grow, they they were there when you were becoming yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so be grateful for each person that you met this good one and the one that uh, treated you badly maybe because uh, they they had their influence on who you are now and uh like you are stronger i know that <laughs> actually i believe in that we are we are stronger uh after meeting a lot of people different people yeah yeah um funny i was thinking of um i try to do this when I'm in social gatherings, 
uh, with with my wife Joanne or whatever. I'm usually pretty talkative. Brona can imagine that. Mm -hmm. But when I hear people tell stories, I try not to share stories. I know it's kind of funny, but like what I want my base or impulse, I try to restrain myself because um, I I know I will maybe take over the conversation. So I pull back. On the other hand, mm -hmm. sometimes Joanne may not share a story and just be there. I'm like, and then I'm like encouraging her to share a story. So what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say is I know what my strengths and weakness, weaknesses are. So sometimes for me, if it's if it's easier for me to share a story, maybe I should start listening. You, you get what I'm saying? If it's harder for me to share a story, maybe we, uh, maybe I should share one and not just listen. You know, it's, it's kind mm -hmm. of... Um, I wouldn't say training ourselves, but you know, um, the the what our tendencies are can kind of um, can we can get comfortable, maybe even too comfortable, even even with the people around us. We could be like, oh, this person's easy to be around, and then I understand that. But sometimes, like you said, you know, easy is not always you know, uh, you know, it's it's good to put yourself out there. You learn a lot, you grow a lot, and actually, that actually. Mm -hmm builds on lessons you learn lessons all around you i don't really believe i think um in a very basic sense um we can you know when we cut off ourselves from people who make us uncomfortable i think it may actually cut off from us from lessons that we can learn ourselves obviously being safe not being reckless but understanding that don't just surround with you with people that you think alike speak alike <laughs> talk alike mm -hmm. think about think about ask yourself be around people that you don't and you may learn something I, that's what i um want to share um i know we talked about this i don't want to kind of berate it you know community building a safer community is something that's constant and when it's constant you have to work at it just like communicating it's not like okay i made it i have the best community best people around me <laughs> It's something that's constant. You're going to get older. Things are going to change. If you get married, you have kids, mm -hmm. whatever your life, wherever life events happening around you, your perspective, what's important changes. So, so will your community. So any thoughts, any final thoughts when you think about community? Because I think when we, when in mental health or in any aspect of life, whether wherever you are in the world, I think community is important, but any final thoughts you would like to share with those listening today? Um, maybe uh, I will I will say something what can be helpful here, mm -hmm. uh, and in my opinion, it's uh, it's your openness, it's your readiness, uh, and that's the like the the main point here. I guess be ready to to make some changes, but but also listen to other people who who have ideas too. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like work together because uh, that uh, that is the advantage uh, in community that we have people all around us. Uh, we are not alone. Um, so stay in touch like with your community be there for those people like take care uh, if they need something um if you want to like have a better connection with other people uh plan organize something together mm. uh, all those points are, are connected somehow uh, i mean safe community for me is when we take care about each other when we are aware of changes that happen uh, talk about those changes, talk about possible risks, uh, but also keep something what is ours, like our thing. Uh, like, for example, our meetings every Friday at, I don't know, 8 p.m., just, just to spend some time together to mm. talk, to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and um, avoid situation when you lose contact i mean when you lose this connection and neglect meeting meetings ignore ignore each other like close for everything uh, like act like you were in a happy bubble without problems it's it's not a solution um because it's not like uh it's always 
funny and it's always good in our life mm -hmm. uh, as a community we should be open also for for challenges uh, that we that the world uh gives us so uh i think uh with that keeping on mind uh, i mean being open taking care of each other but also stay in touch as a group it's possible for the community to, to stay strong actually and I, I love what you're saying. Just, you know, be intentional. These things don't happen, you know, by happenstance. You have to yeah. work on it. And so um, I would say just like, you know, a lot of times stories in my podcast are sometimes heavy. You know, we're talking about mental health. Sometimes we talk about suicide awareness, just trying to um, recovery, all these kind of aspects. But remember the person remember yourself remember the people that surround you it's not going to be always you know very easy oh this avoid the word should i would say avoid the word should you know it may have been a certain way but you know, like you like we've both been saying it keeps changing so if a, if a problem arises if you're not connecting and every single time i see veronica we're like oh it's awesome to see you but we're never really expressing the kind of indifference we have or the kind of disposition or whatever. Um, it doesn't, it's just avoidance and it, it, it becomes more of a habit to avoid. And unfortunately we know that we're doing it, even though we're doing it. Um, so I encourage just like you're saying it, it, intentional, you know, and sometimes friendships change. So that's not a bad thing. You know, friendships yeah. mean that they change. That means that, you know, your your priorities change. So like a lot of times you see this with married couples or people, couples who are having kids or different life events. You know, they have a lot of different priorities. Not that they don't mm -hmm. like you or don't want to yeah. hang out. It's just their priorities now. Now they're waking up 15 times a day at night because they have the kid waking up. So it's, it's a little bit harder. So I give yeah. them... Give yourself grace. Um, have that open dialogue. When it comes mm -hmm. to community, um, it's 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 not a destination to get to community. It's something that it's a process of becoming, yeah, exactly. building, mm -hmm. growing. And I think it's it seems like a lot of work because it is. But if you value like um, having um, support, you know, this is when I say in the beginning when you're in crisis you know find what this is part of it you know obviously there's those numbers i'm sure poland has that emergency crisis but not every day is a crisis it could be like i'm feeling i feel like crap today i'm not feeling good veronica mm -hmm. or, or like and then you have someone to talk to someone to kind of just share mm -hmm. so um i I'll encourage this because sometimes that could be the first line of defense if you're going through but if you're if you're someone who's um, who has a tendency, like all of us, to be stubborn, to kind of set, cast blame on others, to say this is how it should have been, and resistant to change. Sometimes it could be, it could get worse. It could get worse. So I encourage the importance of community is that that it is important. We're not islands. I do appreciate all you. Uh, I appreciate you, Veronica, coming on and sharing your insight. I know that. Um, um, some people i would say last thing and then is that it is important to those listening community is important you know you could, you know you could it may seem oh you know ever there's communities all the time but if you're going to generalize then you're going to generalize your whole life but we're talking about specifically you i'm not telling you what to do or that's not what i'm saying but it's important because you could be around a hundred people, thousands of people, and feel alone. If you don't build a community, it could feel overwhelming. So I think when it comes to our wellness, when it comes to community, when it comes to healing, community is at the forefront of all this. So, uh, any uh, last things you want to say as we say uh, finish off? Mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe shortly. Just don't be afraid to to create a community. Uh, as I said, take care of yourself. Those who are with you, uh, always like learn your lesson that life gives you, uh, and remember who you are. I guess uh, and grow as a beautiful person that you are. 
and uh, and a lot of us are easy. It's not easy, but they, it's easier. We say I'm sorry. I can say I'm sorry, Veronica. But one of the hardest three words to say is, I need help. And if you don't build a community, it's harder to say that. But if you need help, I do encourage you to find your crisis lifeline. If you're in the, in the states, nine eight eight. Do you know what the number is in Poland by chance? If if you're in crisis. Um, is it, what's your emergency know. number if you were to call? Is it uh, um, maybe uh, nine nine nine? It's okay. our yeah. What what, what uh, just you know if you need help the point is you know crisis mm -hmm. of course you call you get help I encourage that but build that community it's important I do appreciate you Veronica to coming on and sharing your insight. Remember to stay updated with Revive Emergency through the various platforms, RevivemergencyFL.com. I've i been asking this also in my uh, recently. If you are one who wants to if you feel that they want to be on the on the podcast, want to uh, share, you can go to info at RevivemergencyFL.com uh, Revive, Revive and just email me. And maybe we could have you on and share your insight. But again, I appreciate you, Veronica, coming on and sharing your insight. This is goodbye from Revive Energy Podcast. I'll leave his last quote. It's from Bryn Brown. He says, vulnerability is not about winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up even when you can't control the outcome.